Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're doing a Ryzen 1700 vs Ryzen 1600 vs Ryzen 1400 showdown because these are the three Ryzen CPUs I think are the best value for money. So let's jump right into it then and talk about these three CPUs. So the Ryzen 5 1400 is a 4 core 8 thread CPU with a 3.2 GHz base clock, 3.4 GHz turbo clock and an 8 MB L3 cache. Moving up to the Ryzen 5 1600, that's a 6 core 12 thread CPU, 3.2 GHz base clock and a 3.6 GHz turbo clock and a 16 MB L3 cache. And the big boy of the three, the Ryzen 7 1700, that's an 8 core 16 thread CPU, 3 GHz base clock and a 3.7 GHz turbo clock and a 16 MB L3 cache. So with all that being said, let's talk about the test rig. So this is the uh, Ryzen test rig I've been using for all my testing lately. This has the uh, Aorus Gaming K7 X370 motherboard, which has been fantastic to use. I really have enjoyed it. Uh, all the memory, GPU, all of that was the same for all these testing to keep it nice and fair. And they were tested at both stock and overclock speeds. So the speeds I managed to get out of them were quite interesting because this was all done on the same BIOS version. So the Ryzen 7 1700 managed to get 4 GHz on all 8 CPUs. The Ryzen 1600 managed 3.9 GHz on all 6 cores and the Ryzen 1400 managed uh, 3.8 GHz on all 4 cores. So quite interesting there um, that it seemed to go up with them. Now other people haven't had that and for the most part it seems that most Ryzen CPUs will sit between 3.8 and 4 GHz. If you get a real good one you might get 4.1 out of it. Um, but for the most part you'll see that, that meaning on all of the cores that is not just on a single core. So that is sort of where we would expect them to lie but interesting that as we went down through the CPUs those are the highest clock speeds I managed to get out of them. Now there wasn't any throttling on any of them either. They're all very good when it came to temperatures. And with all that being said, let's jump to the benchmarks, which are a mix of productivity and gaming tests and see how these three CPUs perform.
So, the Ryzen 7 1700 wins. That's to be expected though. This is an 8 core CPU and it was running at the highest clock speed. But I think the Ryzen 5 1600 put on the best show. It did a very good job in gaming, very very close and within the margin of error in many of the tests to the 1700. But it also did a good job in productivity, especially once it was overclocked. The 1400 did a good job in gaming, but it seemed to lack a little bit when it came to the productivity test. That is to be expected though, given it is a quad core CPU. So let's check out the average FPS then. So this is by uh, adding together all the tests from 3D Mark onwards, and we see here that the 1700 wins. Hmm, that was pretty obvious. This does discount the productivity testing though. But the Ryzen 5 1400 still puts in a good job, and you see they're all very close together in gaming. That is to be expected a little bit, because a lot of games right now are just made for quad-core CPUs, since that's what Intel has been running for such a long time now. Uh, I think going forward we will see these margins increase as more and more games uh, can utilize 6 or 8 core CPUs to their full potential. Which brings us now to the conclusion and what do I make of these 3 CPUs and which one do I recommend. So I did check with Steve over at Hardware Unbox because he has been testing these 3 CPUs also and his results were very similar to mine with the Ryzen 7 1700 and 1600 being very close in gaming. So with that being said, I would have to recommend the Ryzen 5 1600. It is just such amazing value for money. In gaming, it's very very close, if not the same as a Ryzen 7 1700. And in productivity, it isn't that far behind, especially once you overclock it. The 1400 puts on a good show, but it does seem to lack a little bit in productivity. So with that being said, I would say the Ryzen 5 1400 would be best suited to someone who's doing very little productivity or only just a little bit casually, uh, and they're just mainly going to be gaming. It would be an excellent CPU for you because, as you saw in the test, there's not that much difference between even the 1400 and the 1700 when it comes to gaming, although that may change as we go forward. The 1700 also has a place. If you're someone who's going to be doing a lot of productivity um, and you just want that extra power, it will be better to go for the 1700 than the 1600. So that's the people I would recommend it for. You know, people doing video editing, picture editing, uh, streamers would probably be better off with the 1700. Although I still think the 1600 would be a very solid CPU for streamers also. So you would have to decide if you really need the extra power out of the 1700 or if you can settle with the 1600. The 1600 there is the clear winner in this showdown. It is amazing value for money. It's probably the best value for money CPU that's been released in a very long time. Uh, you get so much CPU for your money in terms of just pure CPU horsepower. It is a phenomenal CPU. But one thing I would like to add to the end of this video is that you need to be uh, very vigilant about what motherboard you buy. I see a lot of you guys out there will just go out and buy the cheapest motherboard like B350 you can. You do not want to be doing that guys. You really want to do your research. If you're going to go for a B350, which probably is the better value, uh, do your research first. Make sure it's a good one. Check out what other people have said about it first. Don't just go out and buy one. If you're going to get the X370, then you're probably an enthusiast or someone who wants to take uh, advantage of those extra features or you're going to be running multiple uh, GPUs. In which case, again, do your research. Find a good X370 out there. And that's how I want to end this video, in a discussion. In the comment section down below, let me know and let everybody know what motherboard do you have if you're already running a Ryzen CPU? Uh, which motherboard did you pick and why? And how has it worked out for you so far? And if you're thinking about buying a Ryzen CPU, which motherboard are you looking at getting? And what are the reasons why you think it would be a good motherboard to get? Let's have a discussion about this because uh, in my own testing anyway, I've tested a few of these uh, Ryzen, these AM4 motherboards which haven't been the best but other ones have been fantastic so yeah let's have a discussion about that and let me know in the comment section down below i thank you all for watching this video and as always i'll see you guys next time